and hi guys and this time i want to tell you about a beautiful game called bar trauma for those who love games for the opportunity to suffer in the company of friends the name bar trauma will probably not be an empty phrase the game about a team of a submarine drifting in the depths of an alien ocean has been in early access for almost four years and has amassed a solid audience by the standards of such an original indie initiative. The project at first glance noticeably stands out from the other cooperative survivors. Survival horror shooter mechanics, a submarine control simulator, a social game, RPG, adventure and even economic strategy elements so exist under one roof. A multifaceted chimera bred by the joint efforts of Undertow and Fake Fish Studios proved to be more than viable, but it will be very difficult for a new player to understand all this mechanical diversity. Moreover, the developers did not help him much in this. Hero became the center of the game, but not the part of the globe familiar to us, but the settled of the Jupiter of the same name, covered with the endless ocean and according to the plot, long ago colonized by people. Over the years, the colonists moved further and further away from the cradle of mankind, and at some point they completely lost contact with the Earth. And the only way to communicate between scattered outposts was underwater expeditions on fortified ships with heavy weapons. After all, as it turned out, in the unexplored depths, there are monstrous creatures who are not averse to feasting on the fresh human being. It is the management of such a submarine that the player will have to deal with, and it's highly desirable not to be alone. You just can't describe the gameplay outline of Bird Trauma in a nutshell, but domestic space rangers suddenly come to mind as at least a close example. We have a ship with its own characteristic and equipment that can be upgraded or save money for a more powerful and capacious substrate. On it, we have actor crews from outpost to outpost, performing essentially simple tasks, such as a delivery escort, resource extraction, or the emulation of particularly aggressive underwater fauna. In settlements, you can take quests, stock up goods and hire for assistance. At the same time, it is in our interest to help the development of underwater civilization, making the inhospitable world at least a little more hospitable. We will always have more enemies here than friends. But even the rangers, the main event took place during visits to the settlements, then the journey itself is much more important here. Therefore, the cold space beggar faster than light asks for the role of the second reference. First, in both games, we are constantly urged to go deeper and deeper into the unknown. If in FTL our expedition was driven forward by an army of invaders, here this role is played by an aggressive radiator of Jupiter, gradually penetrating into the ocean and making surface waters uninhabitable. True, this mechanic remains purely optional. Secondly, both games are focused on crisis management and prompt resolution of emergency situations by the ship's crew, divided into different technical roles. Either you have to put out a fire, or cope with the depressurization of vital complements, or make uninvited dangerous guests on board, or treat injured comrades. For each of these tasks, you need to have a responsible comrade. Only in bathroom any member of the expedition can and easily should be played by a living person. It will be difficult to cope with all the tasks of navigating, repairing and protecting the ship alone or even together, even with the help of boats. Local multiplayer can accommodate up to 16 people, but for full control over the ship, it is desirable to have at least 5 members in this team for main roles. The captain is at the head of the crew, setting the coordinates of the moment of the submarine, monitoring the status of all systems, and issuing orders to subordinates. Among them, a technically savvy character plays a key role, an engineer and a mechanic. The first controls the reactor and repairs electronic equipment, 
and the second is responsible for mechanical failures and crafting all kinds of consumables. The minimal component team is crowned by a ship doctor and a security officer who shoots underwater monsters both overboard and on the deck. Adversaries easily penetrate this submarine's hull. Of course, with some requirements for a teamwork, it is highly desirable to play in the company of friends and with voice communication. You can coordinate actions using the in-game interface, but this is much less convenient and every second of the way can cost a life. And there is absolutely nothing to do in World Trauma for single gamers. The authors of course promise to develop the single player mode in every possible way, but so far it remains only a measurable pace of an experience that you can get in co-op. And even as a training ground, it will not be possible to perceive it, no matter how many balls you pump. They will remain just as stupid and giving them orders will not be enough to worry about. At the same time, Blood Trauma remains an extremely effective horror, which is actually not so surprising. Given this portfolio of their lead developer, he was previously noted for the various written horror film SCP Containment Breach. Almost the entire gameplay takes place in semi-darkness and during Sotas overboard only the weak light of a flashlight cuts the black ocean. And no matter how trial the next quest may be in words, you will never know for sure what or who is waiting for you behind the next reef. Separately, the fact that you will almost always look at your submarine through the interfaces of onboard instruments escalate the situation. A similar solution has already been seen in another creepy game about the submarine, Iron Lung. Here on the radar appears some kind of moving dot heading in your direction. It remains only to give the order to team to take up arms and wonder what it is, as long as you have time for this. Of course, user guides from players who have already filled their bombs are partly saving the situation. Better yet, recruit such an expert in bird trauma to your party in order to ask questions that the authors should have answered in a good way. But even after mastering all the basics necessary to pass, you will be regularly encountered elements that are simply not explained in any way. Sometimes, during navigation, the ship simply refuses to obey. And you have to think, why? Is your character lacking skill points in the art of Helmsman? Is this the moron mechanic not watching the reactor? Is it some secondary system on the ship that has failed? Maybe one of the pumps in the power's compartment broke down? Maybe your hero was sized by psychosis? Or are your hands too crooked for this game? Spoiler. More than one answer is likely to be correct. And guess what? So, Biotrauma is both a cool and usual survival horror for the company and an original role-playing platform with many interesting tools and mechanics. But not everyone will be able to roll into it. The threshold of injury is indecently high, and the point is not so much in complexity as in the pathological inability of the authors to properly present and explain all their ideas. And for a full-fledged experience, you still need to find a few like-minded madmen. But if you manage to put together a strong team of divers who are not afraid of either creepy monsters or long user guides, you can drown in the local ocean for tens, if not thousands of hours. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and see you guys in the next review.